welcome back in this video i want to talk to you about a particular important concept called list comprehension let's say if you want to generate a list of integers from zero to let's say nine we will do something like this using for loop okay you will first define an empty list and then we write our for loop here let's say for i in range let's say 10 right because we said from 0 to 9 don't forget your column then we can say that list dot then we append our i all right and after that we can print our list so if we print our list we expect that we get a new list containing integers from 0 to 9 see how i didn't bring my print statement here okay so know when to bring the print statement in the for loop block and then know when to take it outside so if i run this code i'm just getting a list of integers from zero to nine how many lines of code here about four right or five we can just do this on two lines right by using something called list comprehension so for that it will just be this way you define the variable here or the expression then you give it the condition that is the loop here so here we'll do for x in range then simple as that then here i can print my new list as simple as that so we will get the same thing as we did with the four or five lines of code using just this two liner so let's run this and see we are getting the same thing so list comprehension is very powerful thing let's look at another example if we want to generate a list of multiples of two between two and twenty inclusively how can we do that we can use list comprehension to achieve this so using for loop again we will do something like this first define your variable let's say mod of two equals an empty list then next we use our for loop so for let's say s in range one to eleven because we want multiples of two between two hot and twenty inclusively all right so don't forget your column here then here we can say that mod 2 dot append we append our x here but since we want a multiple of 2 it means we should multiply each value between this range by what 2 so let's do that and then after that we can print our mod 2 so let's run this code and see what we get we run it we we are getting a list of the multiples of 2 between 2 and then 20 itself so let's see how we can do this achieve the same thing using list comprehension just few lines all right so by that we just write our two line of code mod 2 is equal to then here we say what x all right times the 2 so you can manipulate the variable before even you write the for loop then here we say for s in range 1 11 right then we print our mod 2 so if you run this we expect that we get the same thing this mod 2 and this mod 2 should be the same thing all right if you run it we are getting the same thing so list comprehension is a very powerful concept so what about we want to generate a list of integers that are divisible by five all right you can pause the video and do it yourself and after that you check the solution that i'll have for you so let's continue on when you are done you can check it using for loop you do something like this divisible by let's say five this is just a variable okay so i create that empty list then here i'll say for any variable that i want i in range here i want the list to be 
from 1 to 100. Okay, that is a list of integers that are divisible by 5 between 1 and 100. So, I'll pass in 1. Then, since I want 100 inclusively, I'll use 101. Alright. I bring my column here. Then, I'll bring my conditional. Alright. If I modulo 5 equals 0. Because we want what? Our list to be divisible by 5. So, if when you divide that number by 5, you get 0. Then, it means it's divisible by 5. All right, so divisible by five should append this i. It's as simple as that. We are done with our code. So if we print our divisible by five, let's see what we get. We are getting a list of integers that are divisible by five between five and hundred inclusively. Now you can pause the video again and then use list comprehension and achieve this quite simple again two liner so here i can say div five any variable that you want okay just simple variable then here what can we do we will say s for s in range one to one zero one remember just separated by spaces then we pass the if condition that we use here if i sorry x modulo 5 equals 0 all right so we have to correct it here for x in range 1 to 101 so if you run this code or print our the 5 let's see if you get the same thing as the one above and then we are getting exactly the same thing so this comprehension are very powerful but make sure that it doesn't make your code complex because sometimes it can get really really complex now lastly let's look at dictionary comprehension okay we can also use this comprehension on dictionaries based on some existing sequence so let me comment this out and let's say if i have a list of programming languages okay Python, C++, Java, MATLAB, and then JavaScript. And I want to generate a dictionary based on this. Now, the dictionary, the key of the dictionary will be the name of the programming language. And then the value will be the length of the programming language. So how can we achieve this? I'm going to do the comprehension part that is dictionary comprehension part then i'll leave it for you to figure out how you can do that using follow okay so here i can just define my that equals then i bring this because you know that we use curly brackets to define dictionaries so what i want to do here is that i'll first define my key that is the variable that i want to represent my key anything goes so i'll use lang then I bring my column. Don't forget that this is how we define dictionaries, right? The key on the left hand side, column. Then after that, you bring the value. Then the value, I want it to be the length of the name of the dictionary. So here I use the length function. Then I pass in length, all right? So after that, I'll say for length in. So here, what we are simply doing is we are extracting length. Where from length? Where can we get it? We will get it from this list okay for lang in languages all right it's as simple as that we are done so let's run our dictionary and see what we get so if we print my this we are getting exactly what we want to achieve the name of the dictionary as a key and then the length of the name as a value so C++ has three characters, Python has six, Java has four. So I will leave it for you to, to achieve this same thing, this same dictionary using follow. Bye-bye for now. See you in the next video where we talk about more advanced concepts. Bye-bye.